Um, so the session is being recorded. Uh, and the first thing I'd like to do is um, make sure that I've uh, captured the quorum of TSC members. Um, so I've, I've noted that uh, Hart Montgomery, Mick Bowman, and Murley uh, Krishna have joined. Um, let me go through the rest of the list. Is Arno on the line? Okay, how about uh, Ben Nguyen? Chris Ferris? Dan Middleton? How about Greg Haskins? Richard Brown? How about Sheehan Anderson? Okay, how about Thomas Bloomer? Okay, so it looks like we've just got uh, three of uh, the 11, so that's not quorum. Um, Brian, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll. Um, so we can we can we can get started. Yep. I think there's very little yep. that actually required. Um, but okay, there, yep. there are there are a couple of things a couple of things that that would require a vote that we'll just try to um, have instead on the, uh, the the TSC mailing list. Perhaps the conversation there and either do next week or 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 otherwise. Um, uh, so yeah, is Chris Ferris on the line? Okay. Uh, yeah, I know what's happening this week. It's hard to tell. Um, uh, uh, but uh, all right, well, let's, let's dive into it. Um, so uh, we uh, have been continuing to ask folks for charters. Um, we did get a minute from the, the requirements working group. I don't know if Oleg, if you're on the line. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Great. Um, do we think we'd be able to get a charter from the requirements working group um, sometime soon? Um, yes. Um, our next meeting in um, it's going to be in uh, on, on uh, February 20th. Um, let me prepare um, a document I'll discuss with the group on the 20th. Uh, Brian, if you have um, a template or um, I don't know, maybe if you've received the charter from other groups, let me see what, uh, you know, the scope of this document, uh, how it should be. Um, okay, the, uh, the identity working group is uh, a, a, good, a good one, so it's in the um, notes from prior prior events, um, pri I mean prior meetings, so uh, I, would, I would consult that. Okay, I'll take it as an example then. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, the fabric SD. Okay, I think something was until on. Oh, that was just the. Uh, um, oh no. Okay, so so right. So we do have actually one that was sent to to Minu and Greg and I. A link to our charter. Do you have uh, drop that link into chat? Uh, Sorry, I'm faint, everyone. Okay, so I drop a link in the chat for the charter for the Fabric SDK working group. Hey, um, hey, Brian, this is Morali from uh, DTCC. Uh, Father was not able to attend, and we do have the charter. Let me post that charter mm -hmm. for the uh, work group SDK for the Fabric SDK. Is so this is an interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have it here. We're we're looking at it. Um, so this is something that I'd love to get from folks on the call from. Uh, so so this is a working group, you know, different from the others in that it's particular to the fabric project. Although it's a useful way to try to tie together 
um, you know, the other SDK projects uh, and, uh, and other efforts um, I, and can be, could be cross-cutting in a way. But is there, is there a lot of distinction between this and what, say, the architecture working group uh, could be working on? Um, and is this something that, you know, is properly done as a working group or pro properly done as, say, um, a part of the, the development team on the Fabric project? Or, I don't know, I'm just wondering if the working group is the right place for this and if there are similar working groups that thus would spawn for particular interfaces between projects. What, what do people think? And I think we have an opportunity to revisit, revisit the structure. Um, uh, but if it's working, then maybe we just keep going with it. And, and Brian, you know, before we hear comments from the other, this is Marali from DTCC. I think the initial thoughts was that we'll do the uh, the SDK for Fabric um, specifically, but later on, you know, once we once we're concrete on that, you know, look at uh, possibility of uh, making it generic enough across the hyperledger feature. So that was the thought process. Um, just want to put that out there. Okay. And um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rich is on. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, boy. No worries. Um, can everyone see that document, by the way? Um, and I posted a link. It looks like Morali posted another link. Um, I, and Hart says the document might have permissions set to private. Um, okay. Let me let me try to give let me give permission to everybody. Sorry about that. Okay. I think the one I'm looking the one that I posted is public. Um, because I'm able to get to it from a from an ordinary um, browser that I'm not logged into anything special from. Um, by the way, did anyone else from the TSC join since we took a roll call? Sounded like Richard from R3. Yeah, Brian. So yeah, Richard joined. I'm mobile, but I'm on. Sorry, who was that? Was okay. that Richard or was that somebody else? I think that was Richard. Okay. Thanks. So um, we still aren't at quorum, so we're at a point of accepting the ch voting on the charters, like formally and accepting them. Um, but any other thoughts out there regarding uh, Fabric SDK as a working group versus as a as a as a project, kind of uh, sitting next to you know Fabric, Sawtooth, Aroha, et cetera, chain chain so, tool. Yeah, I, so this is Chris. I I think. You know, I think it worked well. It, it really is sort of a, you know, at this point, a sub-project of Fabric, if you will. Um, but, you know, the, the reason that we formed the work group was, you know, to sort, sort of unite on um, a specification for what the API would look like, how it would behave so it would be consistent from one language to the next. Um, and as a means of unifying, you know, what at the time had been sort of a disparate, you know, collection of uh, members contributing to the respective uh, repos. It, it, it could be, though, a sub-project uh, or a, a project of its own, I guess. Um, I think that's really going to be up to Morali and, uh, and Jim and the guys and Bella. Uh, no, so if it's, you know, I think if, it, if we want it to be a sub-project, I don't see a problem with that, but I think like I was uh, saying we down the road we we would want to make a work group hopefully have a SDK which spans across the uh, across across the different uh, implementations. Hey, this is Mac. Um, just I guess my thought is kind of consistent with that. That um, if it's if it is just a you know sometimes focus on fabric, then um, it seems like that's kind of missing the point, at least in my understanding of the working groups, uh, where we expect them to be cross projects and contributing to, across all of them. So the distinction between, back to your comment earlier, Brian, the distinction between the architecture working group and fabric SDK group is architecture is really trying to contribute across multiple projects 
um, and drive unification of it actively as part of our as part of our objective. So, um, it, in the worst case, would it make sense to start to rename that to some API or interface, or maybe merge it with a protocol group? Do we still have a separate protocol working group? Is that still operating, um, or is there interest in rebooting that? I don't believe we have a protocol working group, right? But <clears throat> yeah. So here's here's what I think. I think every project has the potential to expose APIs to other projects, right? Um, and it's kind of the responsibility of each project to, if it wishes for those APIs to be consumed by other projects, to document those, right? Uh, and to encourage conversations around those APIs with the other projects. It feels to me like likely that an architecture working group or some cross-cutting working group is an appropriate place to have conversations about, hey, you know, how might we, we you know, formalize these APIs to be something cross-cutting, cross um, and that we, it might be best to preserve the working group um, as just, you know, the working group structure, the, the, the point of the working group to be cross-cutting, um, uh, but that each project is responsible for, for documenting those APIs. And so, um, you know, like we would have a Python SDK project, you know, a um, Node SDK project, uh, even if that project was specific to Fabric, that's okay. Uh, but I wouldn't have a working group for the interface between them. Um, I'm just trying to be clean here so that when, you know, new folks join the community, they can try to under, understand kind of how we're structured. This is Morali from uh, DDCC. I, I agree, Brian. You know, we don't have any problems making it making this one project. Just and I don't want to overload one project fabric with, with a lot, what is really a lot of different activities. I think uh, there might be some thoughts out there about are there would it be logical to kind of um, move fabric into a couple of you know parallel projects as well, one focused on, um, and we have we have chain tool as a separate project, maybe we could even consider, you, you know, other parts of Fabric as separate projects as a way to help modularize um, the community as much as modularize the code, and that might help with, with some of the, uh, the overloading on one, one community, one team uh, concerns that may arise from having this activity be project level rather than working group level. Well, um, just in the interest of time, uh, why don't we um, move on from this issue? Chris, and Chris, now that you're on the phone, I wonder if you wanted to drive um, the uh, the agenda from here, or if you want me to continue. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'm in the process of collecting the valet and seeing my stuff in the car. So it'll be awkward. Okay. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, on the on the Fabric SDK working group, why don't we continue this conversation on the mailing list? Um, uh, and uh, uh, just to make sure we, we have we have thoughtful voices represented. Um, there was a vote if we had enough TSC members. I know we've had a few that have joined. Um, I, so we had Richard from R3, Chris obviously you've joined. I still don't think we're at quorum unless others yeah. who've joined, anyone else can speak up? Hi there, you got this, uh, you got Leafland Thomas uh, from FunServe. Great, welcome. Anyone Thank else joined since the uh, um, so anyone else joined since the local from the TSC? Okay. Um, yeah, I've got so, five. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, so just just to throw this out there, there was a, a conversation about putting the archive of the uh, the Slack channels, which we now can get access to. Ironically, now that we've <laughs> no longer need to to support 6,000 users on Slack. Um, when you archive a, a channel, you actually do get access, as I understand it from, from live, to the archive older than those 10,000 messages, right? Um, <laughs> uh, it's like on the way out, we're able to do what we wanted to do all along. Um, uh, 
so so we could put those up in some place, make them searchable, make them browsable, or um, if people presumed that those conversations were ephemeral anyways, um, you know, we can simply maybe check it in into a place that might be harder to search, but at least keeps it as an archive, or or presume that um, people want to have those conversations on the presumption of ephemerality and uh, don't actually want to continue, uh, or don't want to have those available. What are people's thoughts about that? Um, should we should we put them somewhere else? Um, so Brian, this is Chris. I, I think you know maybe. Well, I know why I put them someplace temporarily, and I'm wondering if you know if we would just sort of agree why don't we keep it around for a couple of months, and then if nobody's looked at them, we can discard them. Or we could go the other way. Check them. So Rye has them in a private GitHub repo, um, just a raw archive. Uh, well, in HTML format, because that's how he was able to extract them. Right. Um, we could put we could put them somewhere. We could check them into a hyperledger repo, um, and then if somebody wanted it to be somehow more searchable, then you know they could take the path of implementing that. Um, we don't have to necessarily jump to that. Um, Trying to see if it's one big file <laughs> or if it's a file. Well, I mean, we could we, we could think about putting them in Nexus when we get that set up. Um, then it probably could be searchable. Mm. Check with Rai to see if that would be feasible. I don't know how much space it's going to be. You know, recall it wasn't that not much. huge. Yeah, yeah. not huge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if anyone wants to, uh, um, I mean, I'm looking at it now on GitHub uh, in Rise message. It is pretty much raw HTML <laughs> checked in as files in the GitHub. Um, uh, but a little bit of processing, and you end up with something that could be fairly readable. Okay. Well, we don't have to burn more time here on it. Um, but uh, if it's on this pot, we can put it in. Um, uh, moving along, I'm just checking the chat to see if anyone had any other thoughts. Um, okay. Um, oh, by the way, as a, as a side note, now that we've moved to Rocket Chat, there was the proposal to have a Rocket Chat channel for TFC calls instead of using the chat and go to meeting since that disappears at the end of every meeting. Um, uh, and I don't think we disappear. get an archive of that. It um, doesn't disappear. I'm sorry, who is that? This is Vipin. It doesn't disappear. It actually, that chat is part of the archive of the meeting. Oh, okay. I mean, it can, you know, it can be archived in the sense that I have archives of all chats, of all TSCs. Right. If you're running the GoToMeeting client, it it makes a copy of the chat local, so. Yeah. Uh, it still might be nice to integrate with her, where other chats are. Um, I mean, it's convenient, it's nice to have it right there, but. So I, I, I thought that having the chat on the, uh, the Rocket Chat TC channel actually would also enable people to come in after the fact and contribute to the discussion as opposed to just read it. Um, I yeah. mean, that's the advantage of doing that. Once you're dealing with just an archived copy of the of the chat transcript, it's it's static. Right. Okay. Um, let's let's further iterate this then on the uh, on the TSC list. Um, maybe get to a to a load of some sort. Um, Okay, so then we also asked for project updates. Uh, and uh, um, oh, first off, I'm sorry, any other comments on that? I don't want to shut down the conversation. Okay. So it, we asked for project updates. And um, it's not clear to me if this is going to be a weekly thing, if we wanted this to be a weekly, weekly thing. Um, I tend to find that delivering updates in a phone call. First off, thank you to everybody who did 
uh, fill this out. I think it is important that we do this on a regular basis um, as a way to maintain kind of an ambient awareness of the other projects going on. Uh, uh, some projects I know, like Apache, require their, their uh, different communities to report in once every three months-ish. I'd certainly love to <laughs> have a more frequent check-in than that. Of course, they have 300 projects to deal with um, at the, on their calls. <laughs> Um, but I don't know uh, what kind of frequency we'd like. Um, we're not necessarily going to walk through this at every TSC meeting. I do think, however, that, that it is useful for the TSC to be reviewing these as its responsibility um, and to to you know have you know kind of a response if either there's no update or the update indicates that there are challenges in the community. Um, so I, I'm, I'd love to have a conversation. You know, uh, I think I think back to this. Updates may be something that we could do here if anyone felt that there was something that popped up in these that is worth talking about at a TSC level. But I'd also like to talk about, you know, um, for how do we, should we ask how to do posts? What's the kind of frequency that we should ask projects to report to the TSC? Should it be a quick summary like this to the TSC mailing list once a month, once every two weeks? Um, uh, I had ambitiously 1.1 .1 today, uh, this week in a blah project. Um, and that might not be too much to ask for. Um, but what's the right frequency and format for that? I wonder if folks, folks have any opinions out there. This is Bipin. Uh, initially, it was once a month, as suggested by Chris. Yeah, I think monthly is good. And then the nice thing, Brian, is that it also coincides with the newsletter, and so we can incorporate the same content. Uh, this up. We lose somebody. No. Uh, we're all here. Um, sounds like the there's convergence on once a month, um, and hopefully that's free enough. Um, I think that is that is at least the, the bare minimum, just for the sake of creating the newsletter and, and getting the word out more broadly. Um, and some projects won't be as active as some of the others we have now, um, so once a month might be right. Um, and then is the is the TSC the right meeting to say go through these line by line, and um, I, you know, or is it? Uh, you know, is it better to try to drive that conversation on the mailing list and then bring things here that we feel yeah, for the iteration? So, um, for me, I, I think my take is that it's not necessarily something that we would need to go through line by line or whatever. I mean, it's there, it's informative, and, um, uh, you know, it's a way of keeping touch with what's going on you know, just the next step that's over from you. Um, so, you know, from from that perspective, it's, it's very, very useful and certainly useful for awareness. Um, I, I would think that, you know, from a TSC perspective, the focus on projects on the TSC would be more along the lines of, you know, what are the guidelines for incubation and, and you know, if we run into inter-project bubbles or whatever, that, you know, the TSC would be where we would iron those things out. Um, and where we would, you know, look to drive the, you know, the consolidation, integration, interoperability aspect of the, the cross-project uh, landscape, if you will, um, uh, within like the larger, uh, as opposed to having to, you know, report. I mean, again, I think it's useful to report what's going on in the various projects, um, but it's not clear to me that we necessarily wanted the TSC um, to, 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 to be driving the project, if you will. So, um, I, I agree the line by line is, is uh, um, too much, but um, it's still nice to have a, you know, kind of have a fixed point of communication. Um, and even if you just say, um, here's, the, here's the highlight for the month, the one highlight for a month, in the TSC, that's likely to spurn um, conversation and communication um, that goes broader than the individual project um, 
kind of working group things. So I don't I, I would not want to dedicate a whole meeting to those to that communication, but something that allows us to sort of see a picture of what's going on across the groups would would be helpful. So so what Apache requires, um, and I'm trying to look this up in the background, um, what Apache requires each of the projects to cover in their reports to their board, which again happen only you know, once every three months, but um, but they actually, you know, they make a report and the, and the report actually gets voted on and accepted by the board. So the board is basically acknowledging we have read this and probably no issues, you know, probably it's just a real quick scan. And, and in fact, they even do this, some of their voting ahead of time in the version control system and subversion so that when they get to the actual board meeting, if there's already a quorum of, of yes votes to accept, then they don't even spend a second on it during the board meeting, right? Um, and so in the ideal case, during their board monthly board, board meetings, they um, are only talking about the edge cases or the things that, you know, if the report was incomplete or there was a concern about what they read. Um, they require the projects to report on the kind of the status and the health of the project. Are there any issues specifically for the board to act on? Um, did the project make a release? Um, uh, describe the overall activity. Um, so it's it's you know uh, oh and you know are there new developers coming in that sort of thing? Uh, I can send actually the link around. It's probably um, a bit much to ask every project to do every month, but it does kind of show. Um, let's see, uh, it does show the. Um, the board kind of performing a level of due diligence um, on the projects, right? Making sure, and again, this is important when you have <laughs> 300 projects and not six, um, but it is partly as well about making sure that as we grow, um, we're able to maintain this, this oversight and this ambient awareness and this governance, um, even on projects that folks are not following, you know, um, at all, right? So, so and then that would be sort of like looking at the aspects of projects, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, vitality, that, right? So you're, you're also talking about having things like, you know, number of contributors, contributor diversity, um, number of commits, releases, release, and so forth. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Am I still on here? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah, no, basically it's a way to, to just make sure that you're monitoring the health of the project um, from a community, from an activity, from a, you know, what's, at least for Apache, what's important to Apache. Apa the Apache board doesn't care necessarily about the technical details of, of your project. Um, uh, and I think we care a little bit more because we do want these projects to be integrating with each other. Um, uh, and and looking for opportunities to work together, but things like legal issues, right? Um, you know, is there a flame war that's broken out uh, and gotten vicious <laughs> between your developers? Um, uh, are there signs that you know um, the project is more abundant? You know, um, and this is the basis in many in some cases for saying, okay, maybe this project hasn't seen any activity, no bug reports, no, no uh, you know, and it's time to kind of roll it up and put it in the attic which is, you know, uh, kind of a preserved and amber <laughs> kind of thing. You know, the, the lists are kind of closed up and the, and, and the uh, archive closed. Um, uh, well, and, and archived, right? Um, and, and, but but all, long before then, it's also an opportunity to try to find out, are there projects that merit, you know, in Apache's case, the, the board's attention, in our case, the TFC's attention. Um, and it's kind of an essential way, I think, to grow um, uh, to, to respond if we do grow beyond six, beyond ten different projects within within a hyperledger. I did send the URL around. Um, sorry to those who are only on the phone call, and maybe this is something we can continue on list afterward. Yes, hi, this is Leonard. I, I did uh, receive my copy. It's good. I, I think overall, uh, everything's been said is very important. Um, we need to have that transparency so that we can be 
seen as um, doing good work and um, coming to the right conclusions with the right results and that there's value and merit in what we do. So and that's what important communication is all about. So most certainly Apache does have a format that we can develop the right template for our report, start at a monthly level, see how that works for us, see if we need to increase the frequency. I think Vipin indicated it could be quarterly, but we could start monthly if we have a right, the right template together. So we'll try and make it as easy and as simple for the different projects to fill in the relevant documentation as we see fit uh, via a template. And I think it's all very important. Um, I didn't get the name of the caller. Everything you said is very important that we have that level of important communication and transparency to the board. So, no, it would be a good thing to have a standard template that we could use monthly to start. Actually, what I had suggested, uh, uh, this is Vipin, was that we continue the monthly up updates, but if uh, more detail is needed, then do it either quarterly or half yearly uh, so that there can be uh, more um, depth to the uh, reports. So, um, I mean, we, I mean, we, we have the monthly. It goes into the newsletter. It also informs the uh, the TSC update to the governance board um, that Brian and I uh, give that we report out on. I think adding the the other aspects that we were just discussing uh, in terms of vitality and, and so forth um, would be a, a a good addition. But I I think and Brian, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the, actually the governing board does want to have sort of that built that monthly update. So I don't know if we can you know make it quarterly or anything. I don't think there's much work for that. Maybe maybe what we do is have this kind of level of activity, or the, the kind of reporting that we see here on the in the agenda, um, you know, a monthly thing, just so that we know, know about features and functionality and major releases and that sort of thing, and then a quarterly update, which is more about the health of the project, you know, more about these issues like uh, committer, diversity, committer, um, you know, um, uh, uh, issues being responded to. Are there any issues for the for the TSC to pay attention to, that sort of thing? Um, you know, just to try to um, and say that's more of a, of a project health check-in, you know, uh, check-up, uh, and that those would be reports that the board um, acknowledges by a vote having accepted. Right. I think there's an important kind of thing there to say that's actually a, you know, that the, the board was active in reviewing that, you know, even if offline, even if outside the context of a call, but at least reflecting that kind of chain of governance um, uh, between the two. So monthly, just the raw technical kind of, kind of update, um, and then quarterly health update. Yeah, and, and I like that because quarterly health, guess what, can always at some point in time transition to a dashboard and that dashboard is always available so that anyone at any time can review health status on any of the projects or if any relative relevant issues uh, that are critical um, well knowledge that everyone needs to know can be part of that dashboard so it's something we can all move towards in time uh, using the idea of a dashboard and, um, and, and and to provide health ongoing so I like that idea <laughs> okay. Um, any other thoughts? Uh, I don't know that there's a uh, enough of a proposal here yet to vote on something. Maybe I come back and it's, um, put something on paper. Give us a chance to review it, and we can vote next week if we hit quorum. Um, how does that? How does that sound? Oh, good work. Good work takes time. So yeah, I think that that certainly is a good approach. Okay. Let's iterate this over the next week then. Just want to make sure everyone else has had a chance to speak. Okay. Um, so uh, we're expecting a conversation next 
next week um, about uh, the global sink log. Uh, Tomas um, is scheduled to present. So um, if folks want to review the documents uh, that Tomas sent around a couple of weeks ago, um, or perhaps even a few months ago this time, would be cool. Um, and we're also, I think, eager to hear about um, plans to potentially bring that to, to Hyperledger. Um, I wanted to also send a reminder to folks that uh, we have kind of a last call for mentors and project suggestions um, for our internship program. We've got a, a couple of good ideas, and I think what we'll do is we'll come back to the TSC with kind of a recommended set of those ideas and, and for acceptance sometime in the next few weeks. Um, but the deadline would be tomorrow to fill that form out, and there's a link in the agenda uh, to that form. Um, but we're excited about the uh, the suggestions that have come in and looking forward to, to kicking this off as a way to expand the, the community. Um, I, any other, um, let's see, oh, uh, HackFest. So um, there's a hackathon taking place in um, China, March 10th and 11th um, in Beijing. Um, I'll be there for it. It's not clear to me who else from this call will be there, but uh, um, I think our members of our China Technical Working Group will be there. Uh, but I think the call was made um, not to have a hack fest at the same time. Um, just the logistics of getting that, that done seem to, to uh, have presented, themselves, presented challenges, and I think it's kind of late as well for many of, of you to be able to attend that, uh, just with you know, travel commitments and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and, and getting invite letters done and visas and that. Um, we do want to eventually have a, a HackFest in China. I think it might be something we do in parallel to a HackFest somewhere else, um, just because, uh, you know, for logistics and such. But um, that does open the project of finding a new lo another location for uh, a HackFest, uh, either end of March, beginning of April, that sort of thing, because I think keeping the drumbeat going and keeping the face-to-face -face engagement. Um, we could do it in New York. We could do it in Europe. Um, uh, but uh, um, if uh, uh, folks have a preference for this, um, uh, well, let's, let's, let's give it a few, a few moments here just to talk amongst the TSC. Do we, do we want to aim to have another HackFest? Do we prefer to have it in the US or, or Europe? Um, or somewhere else in Asia uh, at a stretch um, uh, at the end of March, beginning of April. Um, uh, uh, and then we should be also, we're trying to get back in the saddle of planning these uh, further out. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, but, but where would people like to have it next and where do people think it's reasonable to have it next? And has anyone signed up to help us find a location for the next one? So I don't, I don't know if you can hear me. I only have one dot all for a while. Um, March is going to be really tight for me, anyway, travel-wise. I don't know if I can squeeze in a half a in March. I'm sorry, hack that. Yeah, if we kept to our regular schedule, it'd be end of March, beginning of September. I'm sorry, end of March, beginning of April. Um, and and yeah, I'm sure people are starting to to get booked out there. Um, starting to book their travel and make commitments to that time frame as well. Um, but I, I'd hate to go too long without a without a a face to face. I think we should have it in Boston so that Greg can come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the slacker. <laughs> If Greg had a location, um, then uh, that would make it really easy. That would be very easy, yes. I would have no excuse. <laughs> uh, we have a, IBM is a lab. I, I'm not sure what kind of space we have. I know that there's like an auditorium uh, area that can be you know, repurposed. And, um, what I can probably do is to see if we can leverage something a little bit. So that, that wouldn't be in downtown Boston, but it would be out by 495. OK, well, let's um, continue this conversation on the TSC then. Because um, you know, we, we obviously want to 
get this set so people can make travel plans if we're going to do it reasonably soon. I uh, just wanted to, and, and if anyone can make it to Beijing March 10th and 11th, uh, I, we would welcome you. Um, it, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, uh, get in touch with me and, and or Todd about, about uh, getting connected to that. Because um, having some expertise there would just be really, really helpful. Chris, I don't know, are you planning to be there? I am. Great. Okay, well, we're, um, we're at the end of the formal agenda. Um, are there any agenda items anyone wanted to add? Okay, then. Um, folks, another 17 minutes back to their, uh, their day. Um, thank you all very much, uh, and uh, uh, we'll talk uh, again next week. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thanks, Brian. Sure. Sure. Bye.